Hi, my name is Lindsay Crawford and today I will be presenting about my reflection for my gifted education class. I first wanted to start with this picture. This picture really encompasses everything that I think of when I, I consider a gifted student. They interconnect with different disciplinaries, they think in connections, and it's almost like a process. I like this because when I really think of gifted education and gifted students, I really think about them taking a, taking different ideas, connecting them, and then coming with an output, which would be with their dreams, aspirations, ideas, or thoughts. And that's really what I think of when I think of gifted education. So this picture is something I automatically think of when I talk about education. And this class has really helped me um, see this connection. And I'll kind of go into that further when I talk about my philosophy. So I first want to start with two resources that I found were really useful. One of the first stigmas I came in with is that gifted education almost separated students, um, saying that students who were gifted were the only ones who were smart in the room. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, that is something that uh, that's a preconceived uh, stigma that I had. Um, I had a negative experience as a child with it. Um, however, now I've realized there's a difference between a bright child and a gifted learner. I see it almost as if the bright child is someone who like every child can be bright. They can know the answer. They can be interested. We hope that every child's bright. Let me correct myself there. We hope that they enjoy their peers. They hope that they are receptive and they absorb information and alert and learn. Um, but I really think being a gifted learner is something that's special for every different student. So everyone can be bright, but not everyone can be gifted. And I really think gifted is taking that one puzzle piece and taking it a step further. So yes, they may be attentive, but they're they're curious and they're wondering how they can go one step further. May, they may get the answer, but they might go one step further and see how that answer can connect to a bigger picture. I really kind of see it as a puzzle piece. Um, if you're a bright child, you complete the puzzle, you understand the puzzle, but a gifted child might take that puzzle and try to connect it to other puzzles to make a bigger picture. That's something, just a visualization that I get when I think of the difference. And this handout really helped me break that stigma that I have, and I, I constantly use it still as a reference. I use it during my interview, which I'll talk about later, um, and it's something that I consider a really good resource. Another resource that I felt that was really helpful that I, I look at constantly um, is the the gifted the characteristics and problems that may arise. Um, this is actually something I'm going to do my bibliography on because I'm more interested to see. Um, there's a stigma, which I'll go into stigmas more here in a bit, but there's a stigma that uh, gifted children really don't need that assistance and that, you know, they just do it and they're happy and they're smart and they know what's going on and they're kind of left, left alone. But I've really learned from this class and I've learned in general that that's the opposite. A lot of the time there's a lot of anxiety, there's a lot of pressure, um, social awkwardness, just a lot of different things that can be going on from a result of their gifted minds. Um, and that's something really considered and something I'm looking forward to is learning more about as the semester goes on. So I want to go over stigmas first. My first stigma is that um, gifted students really don't need help. I've seen this a lot in my previous classes where um, they've done the thing where when they do their specializations for lessons, they're just, oh, just just uh, pair the gifted student with another student who doesn't know what's going on. Them teaching the lesson will give them what they need to know. I really think that um, they need help. You know, the, the, the stigma that gifted kids haven't made and will succeed in life no matter what, they don't need any special help in school or anywhere else, that's, that's incredibly false. Um, and that's something I believe is very true. Just, just like we make specialization for students who may have special needs, um, we need to make specialization for students who have gifted talents. And that's something this class has really made me passionate about and considered. Um, in my opinion, if we're not doing that, we're not giving students a fair and f fair and right access to their education that they deserve and are warranted through the law. Um, so I really think this is something that we need to consider more and break the stigma. So just like if you would adapt a lesson for special needs or adapt a lesson for different students of ELL, you need to adapt a lesson for gifted and not just pairing them. And that's something I consider highly. Another one is a stigma that I will not lie that I had. Um, and that is 
Um, myth number two, gifted students love school. Get, oh, sorry, that's the incorrect one. Myth, myth number three, gifted students come from white, middle age, and upper class families. That's that's not true. That's I, I won't lie. When I was a child, I really thought it was with status because. And I've also, when I was older, when I saw it was status because of the, the comments I heard from parents, but it's not about status. Um, gifted education is just as inclusive and just as embracive and and diverse as any other um, gifted or like any other education realm. Um, I really think it embraces students of different backgrounds and gives them that common ground to really hone in together. Um, and learn in an environment that's really successful for them if done right. And I'll go into more detail there in a bit um, when I talk about the interview that I did. And then the other one, and I think this goes back to, um, it kind of resolved, revolves around the first myth that I really talked about, but I would choose myth number two. Gifted students love school, get high grades and greet each school day with enthusiasm. I really think that's false. Um, I have learned that Yes, this may be true. There may be the gifted students like Sheldon or the nerd kid on TV that we all know and see. You know, that's stereotypical. Um, I think, you know, Carlton, for instance. I know when not. Yeah, Carlton. Um, and just there's all these different. Steve Urkel. There's all these different people that I could list off from stereotypes from TV that we see that that encompass this this um, enemy, uh, epitome of of, oh, I love school. Oh, I'm gifted. So, oh, I I must be this way. And but no, I I especially after my interview that I'll go into detail here about soon. I really believe that that's not true. There's stress. There's they need help. They need assistance. They need just as much attention as any other child. And they may not love school. And that goes back to the other reference I made when we were talking about the characteristics of students and gifted students and the impact that it has. And I think that's something that we need to consider more. And that's why I'm doing more research on that. So my philosophy is this, and this is actually the one we came up with for my class, for my presentation, um, and I'm just going to read parts of it. Gifted students are above average students, so honing back in on that all students are bright but not gifted, who have exceptional needs that must be met within their educational setting, which I've talked about a few times, um, that we need to meet their needs just like we meet anyone else for a fair and right ed education. All children, regardless of religious, ethnicity, socioeconomical status, are granted the right to a gifted education program and gifted resources. So going back to that, um, breaking that myth that gifted education isn't inclusive and diverse, it needs to be, and it should be. And then um, this philosophy does is based off a little bit of the Renzulli educational model. My own personal philosophy is really um, based off of the Gardner theory of multiple intelligences. Um, that's just what I think of um, when I think of gifted students, and I'll go into that in a second. Um, we strive to give a fair and equal access to all students. Students must be nurtured and challenged to reach their development maximum potential. So this goes back to what I said, like that all children deserve and access to the education they need. And for gifted students, it's not just pairing them with another student. This needs to be challenging. It needs to be push them one step further. Um, it needs to be thought-provoking and differentiation. All of these things are so needed to support their growth and achieve their goal. And going off of that philosophy, I just wanted to show what I was talking about, the Gardner's theory. I really think that gifted education, going back to this kind of correlates with the picture that I have in my mind when I think of gifted education, where you have the multiple disciplinaries right here, and you have the mind. So you have logical, math, medical, interpersonal, linguistic, interpersonal, spatial. I think these are all very important to consider when you consider a gifted student, how they map things out, how they think, how they learn. I really think these two go in hand in hand for encompassing diversity, for encompassing, encompassing what's needed um, to give that student that full present potential for differentiation. And that's really what kind of backs my um, support for Gardner's theory. So I want to end this by talking about something that I've enjoyed the most when it comes to um, this class so far. And that's really the interview that I got to do. This is Evie. Um, she's older now, so she looks quite a lot different. This is my little sister, Addie. Um, this is Evie. She is such a gem. Um, she was, she's a family friend. And um, I did the interview for her. 
she's so gifted and and I don't just mean that because she's she's also bright but she actually is in the gifted education program um, she has been and she's had both positive and negative experiences and that's really what's driven me and kind of changed my mind about things she's had the positive experience where she had um, teachers that were trained and educated on it uh, on gifted education and she's also had a very negative um, impact to her anxiety which the poor thing um, just had a lot of stress induced from that um, and she's such an incredible soul and she really she sat down and also not just her mom I interviewed her mom who's also amazing um, but I sat down with her and um, we did an interview and she gave her opinion and, and she gave me this insight to how gifted education is so important for students like her with like minds to collaborate and work together and to come up with these ideas and to really challenge them but also that it can be challenging and it's not just a walk in the park and these kids just deserve our attention just as amount of any other person or student who walks to the classroom and so when I really think of a gifted student now I really consider Evie and I consider kids like Evie um, moving forward and breaking those stigmas um, educating myself and working more forward to really help make a good environment for my gifted education students, not just in the classroom, but in museums. Um, and I have to thank Evie for that, um, and this class as well. So that's really all I have for this presentation. Um, I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, I look forward to reflecting again soon and seeing, going based off this foundation I've learned with my philosophy and the different stigmas that I've broken and what I'm still learning. Um, and I look forward to seeing what impact I will make from this the the growth mindset that i'm having from this class thank you very much and i hope you have a great day